the title of God's Word that we are going to study today is Preaching of the Early Church and Preaching in the Last Age. With this subject, let us have some time to share God's grace. If we take a look at the history of the early church, the truth Jesus is God who has come to the earth in the flesh was the most difficult truth for people to accept, even in the time of the early church. This is why people in that age used the expression Nazarene sect without hesitation when speaking about Jesus. However, there was no doubt that Jesus was truly God and the Savior who came to the earth to save mankind. The apostles and the saints of the early church powerfully testified and boasted about that. They said with confidence to everybody, Believe in the Lord Jesus, no matter what, and you will be saved, you and your household. When we take a look at that age, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist at the age of 30 and began to preach the gospel. His physical age was 30. When we consider that, he was young. However, he spoke of himself as the manna from heaven, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and God. So, most people around him thought, how can a man be God? Everybody, where did we come from? Aren't we heavenly angels who have come to this earth? Where were we originally? Did we look like this? Does it make sense that we can come like this, but God cannot? It is a matter of course that God too can come to this earth in human form. The place where we were originally was heaven. We were angels who are with God in heaven. However, as we sinned, we were expelled to this earth. This is the reason we put on the tent of the physical body, isn't it? Although we were with God in heaven, if we could put on the flesh and become humans, God should be able to come to this earth like us, or even in a form more insignificant than us. Shouldn't he? This was the cause of fierce conflict between the Jews, the prevailing religion at that time, and the saints of the early church who believed in Jesus. The Jews said, how can a mere man be God? And the saints of the early church said, men are souls that sinned in heaven and came to this earth. So it is a matter of course that God can come to this earth in the flesh. This conflict arose between Judaism, which was the predominant religion at that time, and Christianity. Because of this ongoing conflict, Judaism condemned the saints of the early church, branding them as heretics, those who opposed and persecuted them will never be able to avoid punishment in hell. Let us look at the book of Acts and learn about the work of salvation, the work of the gospel of this age, through the preaching work of the early church. Let's go to Acts chapter 6, verse 8. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from the members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia. These men began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against his wisdom or the spirit by whom he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak words of blasphemy against Moses and against God. So, they stirred up the people and the elders 
and the teachers of the law, they seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stopped speaking against the holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Here, we can see a conflict between Judaism, which was the established religion of that time, and Christianity. Let's go to chapter 7, verse 1. Then the high priest asked him, Are these charges true? To this he replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham while he was still in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Leave your country and your people, God said, and go to the land I will show you. So he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. After the death of his father, God sent him to this land where you are now living. He gave him no inheritance here, not even a foot of ground, but God promised him that he and his descendants after him would possess the land, even though at that time Abraham had no child. God spoke to him in this way, Your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated four hundred years. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves. God said, and afterward they will come out of that country and worship me in this place. Then he gave Abraham the covenant of circumcision. And Abraham became the father of Isaac and circumcised him eight days after his birth. Later, Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob became the father of the twelve patriarchs because the patriarchs were jealous of Joseph. Stephen detailedly explained the overall history of Israel, leading all the way up to the time of Jesus. Let's go to chapter 7, verse 54. When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Stephen gave this powerful and gracious testimony. However, they all laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul, stoned Stephen, and killed him in the end. This is written in the book of Acts. Saul is Apostle Paul who was in Judaism at the time, but repented later and received God's truth. His name back then was Saul. In the time of the early church, too, there were differences in beliefs between Judaism and Christianity. Judaism said, a man cannot be God. And Christianity said, Jesus is God, who has come to this earth in the flesh. If you don't believe this God, you cannot be saved. Both beliefs existed at that time. This conflict has not changed in this age even a little. By looking at the history of the early church through Acts chapter 4, let us boldly testify to the gospel to the poor souls around us. Let's see Acts chapter 4, verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everybody living in Jerusalem knows they have done an outstanding miracle, and we cannot deny it. 
But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn these men to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Here, the high priests, the teachers of the law, and the Pharisees, who were the religious leaders of that time, called Jesus' disciples and told them strongly not to preach Jesus or the gospel about Jesus. However, the apostles preached the gospel boldly, saying this is something we confirmed with our own eyes and ears. So why should we be constrained for this? We cannot help but speak about what we've seen and heard. As a result, so many people, 3,000 or 5,000 people a day, came to God. Such an amazing work happened. There was a force that tried to prevent people from preaching God, and another force tried to reveal God's glory. This spiritual battle that happened 2,000 years ago is happening in this age too. In Acts chapter 5, verse 28, it says, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. The high priests, the Pharisees, and the teachers of the law arrested Jesus' disciples and gave them orders not to teach in the name of Jesus. But the apostles could not stay silent. Since God told them to preach this gospel to all people in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, they couldn't stay silent and still, right? We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. They were going to put the apostles to death because they felt if they left them alone, they will be a great threat to Judaism. But there was a Pharisee of Judaism named Gamaliel, who was a very famous teacher of the law. This teacher of the law said this. Let's continue with verse 34. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Thutis appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed and his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, what will happen? Even if you don't do anything about it, they will fail. It will fail. But if it is from God, you will not, what? You will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Let's see verse 40. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin, rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Back then, What was people's understanding of Jesus? He was known as the son of Joseph, a carpenter, 
and the son of Mary. That is why every day in the temple courts and from house to house, the disciples never stop teaching and preaching the good news that Jesus is God and the very Christ prophesied to come. It says they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. This is what happened on this earth 2,000 years ago. In the time of the early church, in this age as well, God is leading our gospel so that it can spread quickly and graciously in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 2,000 years ago, this happened in one region, Jerusalem. But in this age, God is expanding the realm of prophecy so that it can be fulfilled throughout the world. The brothers and sisters in Zion all around the world are truly making every effort to preach. And God continues to open the path of the gospel more and more. It reaches to the 12 gospel continents, which are Asia, Africa, Oceania, Europe, North America, South America, North China, South China, North India, South India, Russia, and Brazil. To the 70 gospel continents, the 700 gospel countries, the 7,000 gospel regions, and the 70,000 gospel cities, God continues to open the gospel path wide. What is happening now is very similar to what happened in the time of the early church. Just as God said, the rock that struck the statue filled the whole earth. God is establishing Zion in every continent, every country, every region, and every city so that whoever wants the truth can come to Zion wherever they are throughout the world. God is making a system that allows anyone who wishes to come and take the free gift of the water of life. And this will continue for all people around the world until the last day when God comes to this earth. While this is being done, the things that occurred between the early church and Judaism 2,000 years ago is taking place around us today. Then, to what kind of people will God give more strength, courage, and wisdom? To those who have faith in God and show their faith, He allows them to be filled with the grace of the Holy Spirit all the more every day, every month. The most gracious record in the book of Acts is that God did what? Added to their number daily those who are being saved. People kept coming. God's glory kept expanding to Samaria and to the ends of the earth more and more. Nevertheless, there was a prophecy that a period of darkness would follow halfway, right? However, in our time, there is no period of darkness. We are living in the age when the gospel will be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when all three names, the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit appear, therefore, the work is not going to stop halfway. The water of life flows everywhere in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It started from the sanctuary. When a thousand cubits were measured off, it was ankle deep. When another thousand cubits were measured off, it was knee deep. When another thousand cubits were measured off, it was up to the waist. And what does it say? When another thousand cubits were measured off, it became a river that was too deep for people to cross. And that river will flow into the sea. It flows into the seas called Asia, Africa, Oceania, Europe, North America, South America. The sea represents human society, right? Like this, the work that was carried out in the time of the early church is being repeated today. Not only that, a shout that is seven times more powerful, the Holy Spirit seven times more powerful, and God's grace and blessings seven times more powerful than the time of the early church 
Like this, the message of the Holy Spirit will be delivered to all people. Satan cannot bear this. He knows more clearly than anyone else that he is getting weaker. That's why he hinders us more often. However, he cannot stop us. As Acts chapter 5 says, if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will what? Though they are left alone, it will fail. If it is of human origin, even though you let them go, without doing anything against them, it will surely fail. But what if it is from God? You will not be able to stop these men, but only find yourselves fighting against God. The speech of Gamaliel persuaded the Jews. They called the apostles in, had them flogged, ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. How did the apostles react? Rather, they rejoiced because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is God and the Messiah who came to the earth to save us even though He was in the flesh. That is how the gospel spread out from Jerusalem to Europe in a short period of time. In history, we can see how vigorously the gospel spread in the days of the early church. While carrying out the gospel work and preaching constantly, many arguments and conflicts arose here and there. Let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse 44. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, what were they filled with? They were filled with jealousy. To express in modern terms, many people gathered together to listen to the truth of the Church of God. But other churches remain empty. How would they react then? Today's situation is the same as that of 2,000 years ago. They were filled with jealousy and talked abusively against what Paul was saying. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord. And all who were appointed for eternal life did what? Believed. Jesus is our Messiah, who came to the earth to save us. He is God, who came in the flesh. Everyone had a firm faith in this truth. Let's see verse 49. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region. But the Jews incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They incited people 2,000 years ago, and it is the same today. They do nothing with the Bible, but just incite people to have an evil mind and stand against the truth. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Here you can confirm it. The disciples kept preaching the gospel. Many people were moved and came to have hope for heaven, hearing the news about Jesus. And they received the grace of the forgiveness of sins. We can see this amazing work in the book of Acts. It is not too much to say that today is the age of the new Acts, as this is the age of the new Acts. Wherever the gospel spreads, God blesses people with the Holy Spirit, and God moves the heart of the listeners so that the number of believers increases day after day. 
God makes this amazing work keep going. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 6. For we know that our old self was crucified with Him, so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over Him. The death He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life He lives, He lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to Him as instruments of righteousness. Everyone, Stephen, Apostle Paul, Barnabas, Peter, and John, they all offer the parts of their body to God as instruments of righteousness. They put all their efforts into the great gospel work of God to save the world. God was with them, and they experienced many of God's miracles. Today, too, if we want to observe how God is with us all, helps us, leads us, and proceeds with the gospel, we must not let go of all the souls around us. What does Isaiah chapter 60 prophesy about the last people of God? It says that they are the work of God for the display of God's splendor. Therefore, we should display the splendor of God even more. I ask that by following the will of Father and Mother, let us deliver more blessings and the grace of salvation to all inhabitants of the world so that all people will have great hope for the everlasting kingdom of heaven. Now, the whole world cannot help but pay attention to the church of God. They are all observing us. Before the prophesied period of time passes by, before we regret, saying, Oh, I should have worked more, let us preach now. Now is a good time. Let us preach the gospel to at least one person a day among all the souls around me. If you pray with faith, I will make known God's will to one person a day. God will open the way. The one who created the universe and all things is our God. Everyone, this earth is like a drop in a bucket. It's nothing. We're living in a world that is like nothing. We should not regard this world as big. Because it is not a big world, as long as we participate in the redemption work God is leading, God will open the way, granting us ability and salvation. All of us can do it. Anyone can do it and accomplish it. However, if we don't have faith, but fear with an anxious heart, we can do nothing. Throw away your fear. God said, whether they listen or fail to listen, Preach the gospel boldly to everyone. While doing that, you will be able to bear the fruit of 10 talents, 100 talents, or 1,000 talents if you want more. I hope that you will share the joy of having salvation and the kingdom of heaven with many people. This concludes today's sermon. Thank you very much.